I'm gonna show you how to make the most beautiful homemade wild garlic butter and the most incredible tear and share spongy milk buns that are gonna give you the best garlic bread in your whole life. You're gonna love it. Look at that, beautiful wild garlic. There's loads around at the moment. So you'll see it in woods, you'll see it in fields, and I've even got some growing here, which is an absolute dream. If you get them back, wash them in a little bit of bicarbonate of soda, give it a really good wash, spin it. Uh, if you're worried, you can always just dip them into boiling water just for 30 seconds and take it out. So I'm gonna make the most beautiful wild garlic butter. Uh, 200 grams of wild garlic to two packs of butter. Really best quality butter you can get. Um, I'll just whiz it up. So give it a little whiz. Put in your butter. It's really that simple and you're gonna get the most incredible green butter. I'll take this off. The smell is absolutely incredible. It's a beautiful thing. I'll show you one technique um, for laying it out in a cool way. So I'm gonna do a little bar of flavored butter. I get myself a nice piece of greaseproof paper. I'll take this beautiful butter. Look at that. Look at the color, come on. Color is phenomenal. Squash this down like that. A little lemon zest it just works so flipping well. And also, what's very, very good is fairly generously, like un, you know, un. Um, what was going to say? Not scrimpled. What does scrimpled mean? Um, un. Um, whole whole salt flakes, right? So you kind of kind of feel it in your palate. So nice chunks of that. And then what we're going to do is just roll it up properly. And once you've rolled it up like that, just twist it opposite ways to get that tension. And that is gonna make the most amazing wild garlic butter. Now, what I normally do is put it in the fridge, let it firm up, then I'll cut through it into little portions, roll it back up in this again, put it in the freezer. And then the next time you do a steak, a little bit of wild garlic butter. Next time roast chicken, wild garlic butter. In the depths of winter, when there's no wild garlic around, Pasta, well, garlic butter, like it's like a gift. Another way you can do it, come and have a look at this, um, is do exactly what I did, but pop out your wild garlic ice cubes. I would probably suggest um, that you have one just for savory things, because you might go and put some water in there and go and do like your little cocktail and you're like, there's a little like funky flavor going on, but these are really cool, right? Maybe even more user friendly, right? So the next time you go and do some humble steamed veg, wild garlic butter. You get the idea? It's very cool. The idea, I mean, I guess it's preserving. The idea of taking like the bounty of the beginnings of spring and celebrating it all year round is a beautiful thing. And just to finish some things off, um, these buds, you know, I said you could use the leaves, the stalks, the roots, and these are the buds. These have been washed, and what I'll do is cover that with a lovely vinegar. This is a cider vinegar, cider and garlic vibe. I would hit it fairly generously with salt. So the salt and the vinegar, that will preserve it, right? So it will be stable. You could have little mustard seeds in there. You could put a little honey in there as well. Very, very nice. In fact, I will do that. A little honey is nice, sweet and sour. Once you've taken these beautiful buds um, and you're left with this liquor, don't throw it away. You can use that for making lovely dressings, lovely marinades. You can just bottle it. Bottle it as, as a kind of wild garlic vinegar. Joy. Oh. So submerge that, lid on top, give it a shake and let that pickle away. It will be a gift that keeps on giving. Right, let's get into bread. Um, this is gonna be the most beautiful tear and share, soft spongy, uh, white garlic bread, right? Little rolls. Um, the recipe's really nice. 800 grams of organic plain flour. So it's not a strong flour. We're gonna go into here with 100 grams of butter, which I will just kind of break up with my hands. In here, I have 500 mils of tepid milk. The reason we want that little bit of heat is to activate the yeast. If you go to the supermarket, these little sachets that you get are always seven grams. So seven grams of dried yeast goes in. It's dormant currently. The minute it hits the temperature uh, and humidity of the milk and all the things in milk, which are natural sugars and proteins and things like that, it is waking up. That yeast is waking up now. 
Oh, so it's going to get going. Obviously, yeast will feed on the proteins in the flour and the milk. And in return for that, it will belch lovely gases that will um, give you the lift in your bread to make it soft and spongy and beautiful. So mixing that yeast, um, just to kind of make it even happier, I'm going to give it a nice teaspoon of honey. Uh, that will very, very slightly sweeten the bread, but not much. Nothing really worth talking about, but it will make the yeast very happy. It will now start sort of bubbling and fizzing. That's what you want. So look, typically when making bread, you wouldn't add oil or butter, typically. Um, and of course, you'll use stronger flours often, and you'll make a dough that's much more elastic. But what I'm after here is an enriched dough, something that's soft and rich, and really luxurious. And you know, if you think about other enriched doughs, things like brioche is enriched, things like scones are, um, uh, lovely croissants, you know, they're enriched with layers of fat. So by adding a little oil or butter, as we have, you're gonna just get more flavor, more tenderness. Um, it will color much nicer, naturally, which I think in this context for lovely garlic bread is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Another thing you can do is add some salt now. Very, very important, so two, good teaspoons of sea salt, right? Don't under season the bread. It will just taste like thin air and it's not gonna be good. So what I do now is just make a little well in the center. I'm gonna slowly pour in the milk with the yeast and honey, like that. I'll use my fork to start off with because I don't wanna to get too messy. So move it around with your fork until it's too hard to do, then we bring in the hands. If you're worried, you can put a little bit of flour on your hands like that, but just start bringing it together like that and just move it around that bowl. And ideally, we'll kind of semi-clean that bowl from all the sides so I can get rid of that bowl now. And just have a nice little knead up. So let's just talk about kneading for a second. Um, you can do it on a board if you wish. It's much easier to do it on a lovely wet surface. So. Look, when you look at bakers, they're so talented and, you know, they're kind of sitting there kind of giving it all of this and, you know, making it feel very technical. But look, kneading is just moving it, stretching it, pulling it, giving the dough a little bit of chaos. So we want to knead it to develop structure, to really um, make the gluten kind of bond together and get kind of elastic and strong. By doing that, when the yeast starts doing its job and releasing the gases, it won't just kind of disappear into the ceiling, right? It will stay in here, like bending and twisting. And that's what gives you the bubbles that give you the sponge and the softness and the deliciousness that we all love so much. So I would say just like four or five minutes, if you can, just lean on it, move it, pull it apart, pick it up, slap it down. When it's smooth and silky, and it has a nice little kind of bounce back. See that, look, if I'm just touching it, it's bouncing back. We're in a good place. And I'm gonna let this prove. So normally around an hour to an hour and a half or until it doubles in size. So you can see the size of it now. Once that's doubled in size, it's gonna be kind of up around here. So what I do is just get myself a clean cloth that's wet and been wrung out and I can cover it and then I can just leave it here, depending on the temperature. Um, if it's cold, then you might want to put it somewhere a little bit warmer. Then the yeast will get going, the bread will start blooming, the flavors and structure will develop, and then we can shape it for making our beautiful buns. Right, let's have a clean down. So this has had an hour. Have a little look. Look how satisfying that is. Plump and gorgeous. What I want to do now is just break this down into lots of little rolls. Have a little look in the structure in here. Look, just look, that's what we've created. The smell is amazing. So you can see almost like those honeycomb gaps of air. Now what we do is we, we, we knock back. And that essentially means, you know, we bash the air out. And you'll be like, well, why would you bash the air out? You just put it there. Um, we, we just want a better end product. So what I want to do now is get 45 rolls. I'm not going to get the scales out. Like, do me a favor, will you? Um, so what I'm going to do is just roll it out to a fairly consistent sausage like this. Uh, and let's kind of um, 25, 12 and a half. 
<laughs> go with the maths, all right? Um, so that's give or take about right. So 12 and a half. I'll roll this out. And it's about the size like a, a squash ball, like that. I'm not actually counting, but I should be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, if you wanted to do a bigger loaf, absolutely you can. If you wanted to do lovely little burger buns, that would be quite a glorious thing. So there's no rules. Into this tray, a little bit of oil. So rub around the bottom and then the sides. Now let me just dry my hands of olive oil because they're a bit lubricated and um, I want to get a little bit of traction between my hand and the marble surface or your kitchen top, right? So I'm just putting my hand on top like this and I'll kind of close my thumb like that and I'm moving around like that. So one, two, three, and then I go straight in. When you're a bit more experienced, you can go two hands. So one, two, three, and straight in. So you can just rattle through these in no time at all. At this stage in the game, if there's little variations in shape and form, like don't sweat it, as it proves, it will double in size and this will become a sea of beautiful, bulbous, blossoming buns. A lot of bees there, right? Um, what I love to do now, which really does finish it off nice, is take a little brush. So just giving it a brush of milk will just give it the most beautiful golden color. Don't forget you've got the butter inside the dough as well, so that's also gonna add to the color. They need to prove again now for the second and last time. Put it somewhere which is draft free, cover it with a damp cloth, make it taut so it doesn't sort of sit on the buns. Once they've doubled in size, then we can bake them in the oven and I'll show you how to do that next. So one hour later and we have those beautiful things. So you can see how it's doubled in size, all these little gaps have been filled up and it's actually very, very beautiful. So pick it up gently, don't bang it around, don't lose the air. I've preheated the oven to 160 degrees Celsius, which is about 320 Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna cook it for half an hour until golden and gorgeous. And then the fun stuff happens with the garlic butter. So in we go, nice and gently, in the middle, half an hour. Come on, look at that. That is a very beautiful, very satisfying thing. It's funny, in my time working in restaurants around the world, things like garlic bread just seem to be one of the best sellers consistently around the world. We just love it. So, so then I take that amazing garlic butter and just start putting it on top, little bombs of it. And then we can just start brushing it. And of course, that beautiful, sort of pungent but mild, beautiful garlic flavor is just gonna melt in between all the little cracks and crannies of the bread. Just look at that. Amazing green butter. Just melting and drizzling down. <laughs> Pure style there. When you do these tear and chair things, I'm always like, I'm so excited right now, but I don't know which one to take. <laughs> it's like too much choice. Uh, I'm gonna go for that bulbous. See, I want that one, it's in the middle. It's like, a, a, it's in the middle of these. So let's just see what we can do. Let's get in there. Let's just, let's get in there. Look, 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 look. Oh. oh my goodness. Look at that, that's the one I want. That's the one that's got my name on it. So there you go. Beautiful tear and share, wild garlic milk buns. Just a joy. All I have to do now is try one. Mmm, soft, spongy, pungent, mild. How can you be pungent and mild? But it is, it's kind of pungent and mild. You've got those little hits of lemon zest as well, which are just so good. The little crystals of salt. That, my friend, is a delicious garlic bread. Right there. So what are you waiting for? Get amongst it. Get out there, get foraging, get washing, get making. You're gonna love it. Enjoy.